we know that this is a very different year, people of God and families of all of it. Donna and I are so grateful that you're joining us from your homes. And we've been working for a while putting this service together. Thank you, Donna, for your ministry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor Nate. Welcome families and children of Olivet to our family Christmas Eve service. Our hope is that you will find this enjoyable and meaningful for this season of the year. Thank you to all of those who participated in making this service possible, especially young people of the congregation. Enjoy. Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to our family Christmas Eve service. As you might remember, when we have this together in the Christian Life Center, it's normally an interactive service. So there are a couple of things that we are going to ask you to have close by as you participate in this service. Um, we'd like you to have your favorite Christmas ornament that you can share with your family and talk about what that ornament or decoration means to you a candle that you might use at the end as we sing Silent Night, um, items for communion, bread or crackers and wine or grape juice, and also a small bowl of water. Come check out my North Star Christmas tree topper. It levitates. Is this a gummy bear? Yeah, we lost baby Jesus. Hey, check out these LED lights. I have them synced up to a 76 hour all Christmas music playlist. There's my little Christmas DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so are you waiting till Christmas is over so you can go buy a new nativity set when they're on sale? Huh? No, no, oh no. We lost baby Jesus like 11 years ago. Is, is baby Jesus always a gummy bear? Oh, no, oh, oh, we trade it out every year. Yeah, like uh, last year it was a uh, tiny troll doll. And the year before that we used a uh, dog treat. They were the perfect size, but <laughs> Dalton kept taking them and eating them. You mean your dog kept stealing them? No, my son Dalton, he loves those dog treats. Especially the peanut butter ones. There was one year that we used a, uh, a doll head. That was creepy. We, we made a modeling clay, baby Jesus. The dog took that one too. Um, one year we got desperate and used an ice cube. That was a mess and a mess. Yeah, just seems like everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never lasts. Say that again. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to last. And? And what? Say it again, slowly. Why? Just do it, dulcimo, slowly, do it. I don't understand what's happening. Just do it. This is getting weird. Say it! Fine! But when I'm done saying this, you're gonna march in here, and you're gonna watch my star levitate. Fine, 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 do it. Fine. Everything we try to replace baby Jesus with never seems to, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> At the beginning of just about every worship service, we have, we light candles. And today, we light the Christ candle in celebration of the birth of Jesus. Candles are a symbol of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' birth, Jesus comes to us, but we are also given the promise of the Holy Spirit that is present with us now. You are invited to light a candle in your home carefully so that you and your family may be reminded 
of Jesus' birth and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be a blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the one item that means the most to me around the Christmas time is the nativity scene that my godparents got for me, Allie Hufftailing and John Hufftailing. They are also my aunt and uncle. I was the first in my household to play with it. I was given to me on my first Christmas. Then my sister played with it. And currently my little brother plays with it. But Mary is missing right now and we don't know what happened to her. This is the item that means the most to me around Christmas time. Um, this is my Christmas party that is important to me. It's important to me because um, I made it with my grandma and she passed away a few years ago. The birth of Jesus according to the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. Born thy people to thee. 
Merry Christmas, dear children of Olivet. It is a treat to be with you and to share about one of my favorite Christmas ornaments, which you will notice is not on the tree behind me. My very favorite Christmas ornament is a little mouse that rests in half of a shell of a walnut. And there's a little fabric that covers over as a blanket and its little tail hangs over that walnut. It's my favorite ornament because it reminds me of all the cozy feelings of Christmas and being home and with family and being loved and secure. The reason that ornament is not on this tree is because I keep it at my parents' house. It's there along with part of my heart, which will always be with my parents in their home because that's the first place that I felt God's love and safety and security and all the cozy feelings that we know as Christmas. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. Hello, families of Olivet. My mama died what is now many years ago. When I was a kid, one of the things that she enjoyed doing was making these Christmas decorations. I don't even know what the method she used is called, I, I don't know, but there's plastic underneath it that she wove in and out. And and I used to think that these were a little bit corny, um, but now, now I hang them on the tree with love and respect for my mama who is cheering me on from the heavenly table. I wish you blessed Christmas. These monkeys are special to my family because when my family would go over to my great grandma's condo, my sister would always get scared of the monkeys and she'd run away. And so when my great grandma passed away, we found these monkeys hidden in a drawer. And now whenever we pull them out for Christmas, we'd always laugh and we have great memories. Merry Christmas. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Yeah.
Hello, families of Olivet. I sure miss seeing your faces today. As I was thinking about a favorite ornament to share with you, I realized it would be impossible to choose just one. I have many that were made for me by my grandchildren or given to me by friends and family. But one thing I really enjoy pulling out each year is this beautiful tree skirt that was crocheted by my mom two years before she died. She crocheted one for each of my brothers and my sister as well, and we cherish them. I've had this tree skirt for 35 years, more than half my life. And so each year when I pull it out and wrap it around the trunk of my Christmas tree, I remember being wrapped in my mother's love. It was fun watching many of you talk about your favorite ornament and how it connected you to a grandparent or someone you love. And so what I wish for you today are those memories, those great memories of those who are close to you or those who are far away. It doesn't matter. The love is there. Merry Christmas. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Children of the congregation and your families, those who love you. When Mary and Joseph left Nazareth to go to Bethlehem, it was about a 70 mile walk it was not something that they would have chosen to do. They had no choice. They had to go because it was a very difficult and a dark time for God's people. The Romans, rulers of the land at that time, were not kind to the people of God. And so Mary and Joseph were forced to go to Bethlehem the home of Joseph's ancestors. 
And when they arrived in that small village, there were many other people who had also come there because they had no choice. People from out of town flooded into little Bethlehem and Mary and Joseph, though they tried to find a place to stay, could find none. And so in the middle of the night, they bedded down in a stable, a little barn for cattle. And there in the middle of the night, Mary gave birth to a baby boy and named that boy in time, Jesus, which means Savior. And so the news of Jesus' birth came to people in a difficult situation. And, and the first people to learn of Jesus' birth were not kings and princes and the people who lived on the mansions on the hill, but they were the first people to hear of Jesus' birth. They were shepherds out in the fields, guarding their flocks in the middle of the night. A bright light suddenly shone upon them, and an angel of God came and appeared before them and announced the birth of Jesus. What a sight that must have been. Can you imagine? And then not only one angel, but a whole choir of angels stood in the sky as if being held up by God's hands. And they sang and they praised God and the disciples were afraid and they were excited. And as soon as the angels left, the shepherds, they all decided immediately they needed to go into town and see what had happened there. And so they went and they found Jesus. All of this, all of this happened in a very difficult situation. There is great joy to be found, children of God, in the story of Jesus' birth. We feel joy during this season, during this challenging and difficult time for God's people and for many people around the world. We can take heart. We can be encouraged. We can feel safe in God's loving arms and in Jesus' loving presence with us. My prayer is to each of you, children, that you will feel that joy and that company, the company of Jesus who loves you, that you will feel that in your heart and that tonight and every night you might be reminded that in God, there is good news of great joy for all the people. Children of God of Olivet, I miss you. I love you. And so does Donna. And so does Pastor Melissa. And so many others. Please know that our love comes to you even if we are not sitting right next to you. And that you may have a smile on your face when you remember us. Someday we will give you a big hug when we have the opportunity to be with you once again. Let's pray together. And after each prayer, if you would respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, thank you for your love at this special Christmas time. Thank you for baby Jesus and the thoughts of angels singing. I hope everyone can remember that this wonderful time of year is all about you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear God, 
I want to thank you for those I love and those who love me. Please take care of my family and all those that are special to me. Bless all pets and all the animals I love and all your animals everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, I love the story about you being born with the animals in the manger. I'm so glad that Mary and Joseph had you and that you laid under that big star for the world to know how much God loves us. I pray everybody on the whole earth can learn this story and remember that every Christmas is celebrated because of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I want to be a light for the world like you. Help me to remember during this Christmas season to let my light shine for all the people I see. Help me to say the right words. Help me to follow you. Give me your love, patience, care, compassion, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, I want to help you. For all the older people and sick people who can't get out, help me to be a sign of your love. Everybody needs love, especially now. I want to act like you, say what you would say, and give people so much love that they will say they can see Jesus in me. I love you, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless us all during this Christmas season. Help us to love one another and pray for each other. Help us to realize that Christmas is a gift from God. Help me to feel you around me and open my eyes to all that you are doing in the world. Give me hope and joy knowing that I am your child, much like you were Mary's child. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. One of the ways, children of God, that we respond to God's love is by giving back to our communities. All of that is a special place, and all of that is sustained by the gifts of your moms and dads and many others, and one day will be sustained by your gifts. We thank you for your generosity toward our many ministries. As we approach the end of our fiscal year, we ask in particular that you would keep us in mind, us together, proclaiming the good news of God, celebrating the power of the Holy Spirit. We share in our tithes and offerings.
It is with joy that we come to the Lord's table. There is joy to the world. There is joy in the world. And when we experience God's grace, we experience that joy. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, gathered with his disciples. It was the Passover. And at that meal, our Lord Jesus took bread in his hands, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. I invite you to join hands with those around you as we speak together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We at Olivet Lutheran Church believe that there should be no barrier to God's grace, especially during times of hardship and struggle. And so we invite you of any age to share in this meal, a meal that binds us together as God's family in spite of the circumstances of the day and allows us to live in God's grace fully and completely. The body of Christ is given for you. And I invite you to partake. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Now, people of God, in remembrance of your baptisms, I invite you to pick up the small bowl that you have with you with water in it, to take that water in your hand in small amounts and on your forehead and on your face, make the sign of the cross in remembrance of your baptism. Don't be shy now. The abundance of God's grace covers us and gives us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of our baptisms and for accepting us into your family and into your kingdom. Walk with us, O oh God, all our days. Amen.
you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father <laughs> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And my cat Pulga is very excited about that, as you can tell. <laughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, serve the newborn King. Amen. Now you are invited to share with your family your favorite Christmas ornament. Have a conversation about it and then put it back in its place to be treasured with joy. Wow. 